Hello there YouTube, it's me Tifo Wilderness. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this month's end of month bot haul. The bot haul for March of 2024. Yes, I've got quite a considerable haul this month. I've got 18 items to get through in this video. So don't be surprised if this video runs out for over an hour because there's a, there's a few little things I want to throw into this video if I remember to do them. Um, and like I said, I've got some comparison bots next to me to compare with some of the things I bought this month. And uh, before I get started, I just want to say a few um, sort of like housekeepy things. Um, now, obviously, I went to the uh, TF Nation Minicon uh, this month. Um, but uh, also something I forgot to mention in last month's um, end of month bot haul was um, I, did, I bought my ticket for TF Nation Birmingham in August, um, <clears throat> beginning of last month. Now, this month... This year with TF Nation Birmingham, um, I am not going to be doing the full convention this year. I will only be doing the Saturday and Sunday. I won't be doing the Friday. I won't be doing Club Con and I won't be doing early access. Um, the reason being it's it, 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 it's cost cutting exercise because last year, um, mainly thanks to uh, the Hilton Hotel Group, uh, whacking up their uh, room prices last year was the most expensive uh, TF Nation I've ever been to it was just for the 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 event ticket and the hotel booking it was like 355 quid and uh, that was outrageous to be honest I was I was so you know you know I wasn't happy with the the price I had to pay especially for the hotel room because uh, the Hilton um, in 2022 the room price for a single room was 78 quid but in 2023, they whacked it up to like a hundred pound for a single room per night, and it was like massive, like 20 over 20 percent increase in the room cost. And I imagine they've done this in response to the COVID years that they had a few years ago, where the uh, you know their their company lost a lot of money during the you know, 2020 2021 due to the COVID. So now they're trying to claw back some of that lost revenue by whacking up the uh, the uh, the room prices for everybody who comes to you know their. Uh, their hotels, including the TF Nation and their, their special rate. So because of that, I took the decision this year to uh, commute from home. I am not staying in the hotel. I will be commuting from home because I'm fortunate that I live only 15 miles away from the NEC and, uh, you know, the Hilton Hotel at uh, Birmingham. And uh, I can commute to and from the convention. And as a result of that... <clears throat> That's why I'm only doing the Saturday and Sunday and I'm not doing all the other you know, bells and whistles for the convention because it's I know TF Nation have put their prices up, but they only put their prices up by five or ten pounds per year. And that's acceptable. But, you know, the, the Hilton just just took the piss with their price increase. They really did. And uh, they've basically. Uh, yeah. So this year I've decided to save some money and, uh, you know, cut back on uh, my convention attendance. And uh, yeah, so, so that's the reasons for that. Um, just thought I'd put that up there. I meant to mention that last month, but I forgot to mention it. Um, also, this month, because I went to the TF Nation Minicon, I went massively over budget on my monthly budget because I usually have a, like a fixed budget for what I spend on uh, Transformer figures every month. But this month, towards the uh, towards the end of the month, I only had about 60 odd quid left in my um, budget and it wasn't enough for me to take to TF TF Nation Minicon, so I decided to you know claw in some uh, some uh, funding from some of my other little pots of money I've got around and uh, I, I, I took some money to that event and uh, <clears throat> as a result my budget this month it, it went a bit over overboard and uh, yeah but uh, it's, it's not a problem you know I I could have spent a lot more but I think what I got for what I actually took was quite good but um, anyway. That's the uh, the like the housekeeping out of the way. So let's get on to the haul proper. Right. So like I said, eighteen items um, this month. Quite quite a substantial haul. Got some uh, pretty impressive stuff. So let's get started, shall we? So <clears throat> now on the second, which was a Saturday, I decided I was going to go on a little well on a kind of a mini toy hunt. Uh, I'd heard rumours that uh, you know certain figures were now appearing on the shelf at the local Smith, well in Smith's toy stall. So I decided to go over to my local Smith's in Coventry, and I was looking for a particular figure. And the figure I was looking for was uh, Rise uh, was Studio Series Rise of the Beasts Wheeljack. Now <clears throat> I decided to um, 
uh, make a play out of well, make a play out of uh, you know um, uh, that toy guy's playbook and get all three of the uh, Rise of the Beast wheeljack molds. Now I've already got the the mainline one, which I got a little while back, but uh, there was there's two others in the offering. There's the new Studio Series, and then there's that um, that Beast Alliance Battlemaster two pack uh, wheeljack that's uh, that's also available. So uh, I went over to Smith's. And this was on the uh, the second, and uh, I got I got Studio Series Wheeljack. Um, now he's, he's an okay figure. I mean, obviously people are a bit upset because it doesn't look like Wheeljack. You know, it's and because they're, they're calling him Pablo because obviously on the side of his van he's got like uh, you know the the Pablo uh, t TV signatures and um, yeah he's got that weird head sculpt with those massive glasses that makes him look like. Um, What's that guy from uh, that Borderlands DLC? Uh, uh, is it Shade? Looks like Shade from uh, Borderlands, the uh, the pirate booty of uh, Captain Scarlet or whatever it was. Um, anyway, this mold, <laughs> yeah, awkward transformation. These door wings, they pop off when you're transforming it. It's it's very busy in the the upper torso when you're trying to crunch everything together to get the uh, the alt mode and when you're going the opposite way from alt mode to robot mode it's 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 a pain there's the there's clearance issues galore on the top of this mold it's it's a real pain to uh, to transform but it turns into a VW van and that's probably the main reason why I bought it and this one uh, obviously you know it's officially licensed that's why I went for this version because it's an officially licensed alt mode it's okay it's it's, it's an all right figure i mean some of these Studio Series Rise of the Beast Deluxes are a little bit fiddly, you know, like um, Nightbird. Nightbird's really, 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 really fussy mould as well. This is the same thing, but uh, yeah, so I got that as my my first purchase for this month. And then, like I said, I wanted to get all the uh, you know Rise of the Beasts, you know, sort of uh, wheeljack figures. So when I came home, I nipped up town to Entertainer because I knew they had this figure on the shelf and sure enough they did so i got the uh the uh beast alliance you know, battlemaster 2 pack wheeljack with that comes with <coughs> another battlemaster rhinox i've got the original battlemaster rhinox and uh, he's in a slightly different color to this one this one's in this like dirty brown sort of plastic color and it looks a bit weird but i've got two of these sort of you know gatling gun ass blaster rhinoxes now um, this figure itself, I mean, lack of paint. I mean, it's like it's been moulded in this two-tone sort of like beige and brown, and it looks absolutely weird in these these sort of dirty colours. And that's something I could level a, a criticism I can level at a lot of the um, Rise of the Beast figures. They're in very very much like sort of monotone, sort of very dirty, so sort, of, sort of like beiges and browns and greys, and it's like really, really boring, dull colours and not, not very bright and vibrant, even though they are based on real-world animals. It's, you know, mostly the, you know, the, um, the Maximals, you know, based on real-world animals, and uh, <clears throat> they're supposed to be, you know, those sort of colours, but uh, I didn't really like the... Um, some of the colours they had on the figures. That's why for my Rise of the Beasts lineup, I'm sort of mix and matching between the main line and the Studio Series. But uh, I'm getting most of the Studio Series ones because of the licensed alt modes for the vehicles. But um, anyway, so I got um, I got Ryan Ups and the, the, the I mean <laughs> Wheeljack. Um, the funny thing is, I mean, you know, this is a supposed to be a smaller figure, but when you put it next to the other one. I mean, they're pretty much the same size, and the mainline one is again. It's a, they're all virtually the same size, even though this one's the official deluxe and this one's less than that, and it's, <laughs> it's weird. So yeah, I managed to get all three of them, and uh, they're kind of interesting. Uh, this one's a lot easier to transform than the Studio Series one. Obviously, the where the transformation works is a lot more straightforward, and uh, you still end up with a decent looking bot, even though it's got the you know the the, the fake chest and all that going on, but. Uh, yeah, so I got this um, the uh, the retool or repaint of um, you know, Battlemaster Rhinox was a candidate for worst bot of the month, but I got something else in that uh, that trumps it. So yeah, so they got that. <coughs> they arrived on the second. Right, moving on a couple of days. Um, we got uh, what was it uh, Thursday the seventh. 
Um, first of all, my uh, comic order arrived. <clears throat> so I've ordered, been getting the uh, the uh, Marvel G1 Transformers comics um, 200 series. Now, I, last year I completed my challenge to get all the comics that I had as a kid, which was issue 1 to 199. Then I decided to continue getting the 200 series. Now, I've been mostly buying them off a, an eBayer by the name of Susanna Carter. She's got most of the comics listed on her site, but she is a bit pricey, especially getting now into the, the later sort of issues, the, two, the late 200 series and especially the 300 series. She's asking like 15, 20 quid each for them. And it's like for a comic I never had as a kid because, I mean, the last issue I bought as a kid was issue 199 and anything after that is is. It's you know you know it's 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 stuff I'd never had and I've got no no nostalgic attachment to it so there's no point in me getting it but I decided to carry on for now to to, to do the two hundred series but I found another um, eBayer who was selling the basically a lot of the comics and he he only had one issue because I assume he was selling off his his original sort of set of comics and he was doing them at, at like flat rate price prices for like three pound each and I thought well that's near enough so managed to get hold of some of the the uh, 200 series comics I was missing for the 260 and the 280 series. So I got uh, 282, 283, 284, 287, 28, 26, well, 269 so that's the 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 260 series and then <clears throat> then i got some 280s i got uh, 280 itself and then 281 285 286 287 and 288 so that's got most of the comics well for the, I think I've I'm missing one comic for the 260 series and I think I'm missing four comics for the 280 series and four comics for the 290 series so I'm missing like nine comics to complete the 200 series so I'm doing really well um, it might get a bit expensive to pick up those last couple because that guy I was buying those from, he's basically sold out of all the other comics that I needed. So I'm going to have to go back to Susanna Carter and pay her uh, her somewhat scalper prices that she's asking for some of the later issues of the comics. But um, anyway, so that's the uh, the comics out of the way for this month. So I did quite well you know, picking up the comics that I did. And then on the same day, now, <laughs> last month, um, I think I mentioned this, um, uh, I bought a figure, another figure off TF Direct. Um, it's a big, impressive third party figure, but I had a bit of a screw up um, when I, I bought it. I bought it at the beginning of the month, and um, then uh, when I was in the process of buying it, uh, something went wrong with my payment. Uh, the order went through, but uh, my payment failed, my PayPal payment failed, so the item appeared in my, uh, in my account but uh, the payment hadn't been made and it was saying we're waiting payment. And well, because I was doing this all this on my phone, I couldn't, you know, I would have had to buy another figure, uh, do it all over again and buy it for a second time. But um, so I, I, I had a bit of a problem with it. So after a few days, I went into my account on the PC and it gave me a lot more options to, uh, you know, to manage my account, including, you know, cancelling orders. So I cancelled the, the failed order and ordered it again. And this was like the week before the Chinese New Year, so you can imagine what happened. Uh, I placed the second order, got the uh, the thing go through, and then nothing. Then <laughs> there was a huge wait while the Chinese New Year came and went, and uh, it took a while for them to ship it. Now, a problem I've been having with TF Direct of lately is I've not been receiving email notifications from them for orders that I've made on their website, and it's very, very concerning. Um, and yet, strangely enough, this second item that I bought this year off their site, um, I got an email notification from them to say it arrived, now was it, it had been delivered or it had, been, it had arrived in the UK or, or something like that. I did get an email notification for it. Anyway, now, <laughs> also this figure is quite expensive. Um, 
So I decided to do the, uh, when I paid for it the second time, I did the PayPal pay in free. Because it was 140 quid or just over 140 quid. So I did the PayPal pay in free where it splits up the payment into three different chunks. And then PayPal pays the full amount up front on your behalf. And then you pay PayPal back with free equal interest free payments over the, you know, the following pre three months. So I decided to do that with this. And uh, this month, obviously, <laughs> the second payment went out. So the third payment will be in a couple of days time next month. But uh, yeah, so now the item I've got, I've got it in alt mode because it looks amazing. It looks awesome in robot mode, but I bought it for the alt mode. <laughs> now, this is listed on some websites as... as um, um, what is it, Toy Easy? But it, it's 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 a it's a company called um, uh, Terrapa Hobby or Hobby Terrapa, and uh, yes, IGN or in Imperial Japanese Navy Yamato, one of the biggest battleships ever to be built. There was two in the class. There was the Yamato and the Musashi. Both of them are sadly sat on the seabed right now, but. Uh, but still, when I saw this alt mode, I thought I've got to have it because I've got a real interest in you know sort of ships and shipwrecks and uh, especially World War One and Two ships. But uh, yes, yeah, so I had to get this, and and this alt mode is 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 incredible. Now there was a bit of a thing with this figure when I saw the uh, the the preview pictures of it. There was a picture where it showed them as having like multiple gun turrets on the front and the back, and it looked a bit goofy and silly. But actually, this figure is engineered in such a way that it has extra gun turrets. Sort of like there's one there and the other one's here, look. They're all tucked away underneath. And when you do the robot mode, they're like sat on the shoulders and the hips. So, uh, yeah, but it has got this uh, this sort of like fish scale design on the, uh, the lower hull, which is pretty cool. And this figure, just for the alt mode alone, is the reason why I bought it. The alt mode just looks amazing. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, it's got turrets, it's, it's got all these separately fitted um, sort of like anti-aircraft emplacements on the side. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's got some art, you know, articulated bits in uh, ship mode, like um, stuff. Really, really cool. Um, transformation is quite involved and quite awkward and... Uh, this in transforming this into ship mode, it's not quite transformed properly because one of the deck plates it doesn't quite fit in properly or it isn't fully pegged in properly because this thing's got a lot, a lot of joints on it, especially the torso has got load, a load of joints, and you have to get everything perfectly aligned for it to transform properly. And I had a bit of trouble with it. Also, it came broken. Um, you can probably see here that one of the uh, you see that that there there's supposed to be another one on that side that's broken off the antennae of the conning tower and one of the um the propeller blades have broken off as well i managed to fix a propeller blade for because i found it but the 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 other antenna piece has, has, has gone um the robot mode it has some issues it looks absolutely incredible because it looks like a like a, a like a samurai or or a shogun warrior and uh, it looks awesome. It comes with two massive katanas. It's got a, like a stand and everything. And it looks awesome. But the transformation's a bit fiddly. Um, and uh, what was the other thing? Um, yeah, it's, it's got some looseness on it. It's like this, it's got very small feet. They're die cast feet, but the, the joints on them are, are, are not quite as tight as you'd think they are. And because he's, he's, he's a bit sort of top heavy, when you stand him up, he, he tends to lean forwards and backwards and uh, fall over if you're not careful. But uh, looks absolutely amazing. But um, yeah, because it has a few sort of negative issues that I've I've had when experiencing this mold, it's it's kind of overridden my you know <laughs> this <laughs> my reasons for getting it, which was the uh, the ship and uh, isn't quite I don't like it quite as much as I, I I hoped I would. But it was a candidate for top bot of the month though. Um, I've got some other things which possibly trump it, but uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> we're already down to uh, no, 20 minutes on this video, and we're only down to the fourth item. So anyway, so that's um, Terrapa Hobby um, JS04 no, Blaze Envoy. He's uh, pretty impressive, actually.
Right, so they arrived on the 7th. So next, uh, we're moving on to uh, the 11th, which was a Monday, and my uh, KTRTs arrived. So starting off with Metal Carbot Wild Guardi. Uh, he's basically a heavy retool of uh, Blue Cop, which is the, the first figure from the line. This is like the, the seventh figure that I've got from this toy line. I've decided to get all the characters from the, the main characters from the uh, Metal Carbots toy line because they're, they're pretty pretty neat. Uh, this guy's a, a little bit easier to transform than Blue Cop. He's got uh, a lot less kibble going on on the back. He's uh, a, lot, a lot more uh, straightforward. He does have kind of small arms and a small head, but uh, he looks pretty cool. He's got some nice colours going on with the silver and the, the gold and the, the purple. Looks really, really cool. Um, reasonably poseable, you know, hasn't got all the joints you'd want, but uh, yeah, he's a pretty cool figure. Looks great. Um, in the show, his uh, character's pretty good because he's kind of, um, he's kind of like a rogue car bot, card bot, card bot, not car bot, card bot. And uh, he's sort of, uh, you know, affiliated with one of the the other kids in school, and uh, he he sort of comes in to help them out from time to time. But then eventually he uh, he gets uh, he joins the crew because um, you know Blue Cop because he has a bit of a, a thing with Blue Cop. Does uh, Wild Guard? He has a bit a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit of a rivalry with Blue Cop, and uh, they have a, a bit of a fight. First time Blue Cop gets his ass kicked, and then Blue Cop gets a power up with uh, Jun the, uh, the 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 kid with the. Uh, the the bracer watch and uh, yeah he uh, <laughs> he um <laughs> they have a fight and he, he wins over and uh, eventually he get he, he gets captured and uh, becomes another one of the the uh, the car bots that Jun has so yeah he's pretty cool I, I I like him he's he's half decent and then oh yeah uh, the review on that the, the the viewing figures on it were half decent it, after twenty four hours it had like sixty odd views which is pretty good. If it had got a few more, it would have been, you know, good. But uh, it didn't quite get there. But it was it, it was a step in the right direction. But uh, this second figure that's literally just went reviewed yesterday, um, it's not done quite so well. Mini Force Super Cops um, Battle Cop. Uh, yeah, so Mini Force has got this. The latest thing is Super Cops, and they've got this this weird sort of subline called the um, the uh, Head Cops. Where they transform into a head and uh, this was the one out of that sort of line of nine different variant bots that they did that i quite like the look of he, he looks really cool i love his aesthetic in both modes interesting transformation um he's, he's pretty damn cool um kind of small but yeah not not the most articulated thing though he's, he's not too bad i mean he has got he's got a ratcheted waist which isn't part of the transformation so that's something um, yeah, he's he's okay. I I, I kind of like this thing actually. I think it's pretty cool. I mean that the the, uh, the the face for the head is on the back. You can unplug it. Oh, like it does uh, it does sort of come off with a big peg, and then you pop his head off, which is on the on the floor somewhere. There we go. There we go. So I put that back on there. So yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a, it's a decent little figure. It's all right. Um, if I lived in Korea, I would probably be tempted to buy more of these sort of headbot uh, figures. But they're kind of small. They're cheap to buy in Korea, but it's importing them from Korea that's the killer. The, the, I mean, I paid, it was over 40 quid for this thing. And it's, yeah, I, I wish it had been a bit cheaper. But um, yeah, they're, they're not cheap to import. But uh, yeah, I managed to get hold of uh, that guy. He was the second Korean toy that I got this month. So that's uh, Mini Force Super Cops Battle Cop. Right, and uh, they arrived on the 11th. So next, right, so my third unboxing video this month was a, a sort of an impulse buy off AliExpress. And uh, right, so this thing, again, I've got it in alt mode. Haven't got it in robot mode because I transformed it into alt mode because the alt mode looks amazing. The robot modes are absolute load of garbage, but it looks pretty cool. Now, this thing. So, it's Welly Alloy MK1 fighter, you know, uh, sim fighter 
was it uh, 4v150 uh, so it's it's officially licensed by uh, sim sim motorcycles it's uh, based on a real world moped and as you can see this is the orc mode and it looks amazing it's officially licensed by uh, by sim and uh, it's it's a it's a fighter moped and uh, alt mode looks awesome um now the robot mode because it's a bike former it's got parts forming um it's the engineering on this thing is not good it is really not good it is it is loose it's rickety um i actually broke it out of the box when i transformed it for the first time one of the one of the little thin little hip joints snapped off i've managed to re repair it and fix it sort of and it does it, it does it does work now but still i mean it's, it's got rubber tires and i think, think they're rubber yeah and uh, obviously the wheels turn um it, it looks amazing in alt mode and this is the reason why i bought it again i bought it because of the alt mode the alt mode looks cool it doesn't actually have turning steering um which is you know unusual you'd have thought it, they'd have they'd have worked out you know turning steering on it but it doesn't have that but still it's a thing um but this is the best thing that it does the the alt mode it does a really good impression of a mo of a real world motorbike or moped the transformation is is scary frightening you know it's so many loose fiddly thin little bits you have to move around it's got parts forming the robot mode looks bizarre you know it looks weird it's not the most articulated thing either you know it's you know some of the joints are a bit weird like you have to like the arms are formed out from the back of the seat you have to sort of pull them off turn them into the arms and then plug them on it's like it's got parts forming you know and it's i don't want to transform this back into robot mode i really don't because it, it was a it was a bear getting it into its alt mode but the alt mode does look really good i mean the motorbike mode does look good but the the robot mode and the transformation is absolute garbage on this thing. It's really, really bad. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's another thing that arrived on the uh, was it the twelfth from AliExpress from uh, Welly Alloy um, MK1 Fighter Moped. <laughs> right, so that's all the stuff before the tf nation mini con out of the way let's get on to the event itself so obviously like i said um at this point in time in fact it was it was the week before the mini con then uh, you had the uh, one of the live streams for um you know hasbro pulse went out that was showing the um the uh, the new releases for um uh, legacy united wave 2 and a few exclusives. I mean, we've had a, they've had on one on each week these um, these four different 40th anniversary live streams that they've been doing, and it was the third one um, where they showed, you know, like um, you know the, the Legacy United figures, and uh, and also that um, that uh, that Origins Wheeljack as well. And after that, I thought I had about how much money left I have in my. I had a bit of money left in my budget, so I went on the Hasbro Pulse and I pre-ordered two figures. And then after I'd done that, I only had about sixty quid left. So it was like this was like a week before uh, the Minicon, and um, so I was coming up to the Minicon and I thought, well, I've only got about sixty quid left in my budget. That ain't enough. So I, I thought, okay, I'm gonna, you know, claw some money out of my other, uh, you know, pockets of money. And uh, you know, claw some uh, some money together to take to that event because last year I took three hundred and fifty quid. This year, I thought, well, I can, if I can scrape together three hundred quid, then I'll take three hundred quid. So I had the sixty quid, you know, from the budget from this month. Um, I then had ninety quid cash in my bedside drawer because um, events I went to back in the last year, like. Um, uh, the NEC Toy Fair in October, then it was the MCM Comic Con in November, and then it was a pre-Christmas toy hunt. Those three events I had leftover cash, which I'd stuck in this envelope in my drawer. So I had 90 quid in there, so that was that was a start. Now I decided to, to cream £100 off my uh, my credit card, because my credit card doesn't have much on it. I only have my, like, my, uh, my, 
my Netflix and my Disney Plus, you know, um, monthly fees go off that and that was that. And uh, I decided to take a little bit of, cream a little bit of money off the uh, my TF Nation account, the, the, the pot of money I'm saving up for TF Nation in uh, August. Um, I, I creamed, you know, 50 quid off the top of that and I put all this stuff together and I managed to scrape together £300 to take to uh, TF Nation Minicon. Uh, this year, obviously, I, I went. I drove up in my car. Um, they did recommend that you download the uh, the uh, MPC or an NCP and National Car Parks um, app on your phone because there's there's a load of NCP car parks around the event. Uh, and I drove up and I, and I got to the street just around the corner from where the um, the hotel was, and it was blocked off with roadworks, and I couldn't get in. You know that way so i went around the block a few times and then i eventually turned into one of the ncp car parks on the new bailey street and uh so i parked my car up there because it was within walking distance to the the event and uh, i got into the event got into the foyer waited for the opening time to come in and then uh, i went in so uh got my uh got my wristband yeah so uh, i got that and uh, went into TF Nation. Now, I knew roughly what dealers was going to be there because I knew Primetime Toys were going to be there. And, uh, yeah, so I, I I was looking... I was hoping that they would have that MBK King of Gatlin there. And I, I went up and asked them about it, but they said, nah, sorry, mate, we have got some, but we didn't bring it because it's too big and bulky or something like that. So I was looking around on the stall they had on the front of the stall... And I saw something that caught my eye and I've seen some reviews or videos on this thing and it looked really amazing because I've got the original figure in front of me. <laughs> yeah, so my first purchase at the event and I paid like 95 quid for it. So it was the most expensive thing I bought at the convention was Transart BMW. Uh, no, BM, no, BWM 11 motor spider yeah so it's like a masterpiece esque trans metal tarantulas because i've uh i've got the original there's the original figure and uh it is these trans metal um well these trans art figures they're they're pretty much an, an upscaling of the original toy but they 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 put a load of premium materials and a few you know engineering improvements and die cast and stuff like that and uh got this this thing looks amazing <laughs> it's it's transmetal 2 well transmetal uh tarantulas as he's jumped off the screen from uh, beast wars absolutely incredible so articulated you know it's got you know die cast feet and a few other bits you know he's got all the the vacuform chrome going on um he uh he, he does the free mode he turns into the mo motorcycle mode as well as well as the uh the what's it mode absolutely looks incredible so poseable so you know it, it's it's like i said it's it's a it's a, a retool well it's an upscaling of the original toy but with a lot lot a lot of extra engineering going in bit fiddly to transform around the top especially when you're going from you know sort of spider mode to uh, robot mode the these the bits that plug in up here aren't, aren't particularly great but other than that it looks awesome i actually love this thing and I, i'm a i'm a very you know i like beast wars a lot especially the original show um so yeah got him and he was the most expensive thing i got at the convention from um primetime toys he broke my duck at the event so that was that was him then um i was sort of milling around and uh, there was a stall immediately next to um, Primetime Toys because they had one big table. Primetime Toys was on one side and then you had Starbase 55 on the other. And uh, I was looking up at the, 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 the rack at the back and I saw a figure on top of the rack and I saw a price on it. I thought, ooh, I wouldn't mind getting that. And then somebody else stood next to me was inquiring about it and I thought, uh, okay, if they, they, if they want it, they can have it. You know, I, I wasn't too taken by it, but you know, they said they were... They were had a, had a great interest in buying it, so I let that alone. So I wandered around the room, and it was quite busy. Um, to be in early doors, there was quite, you know it's it, it, what it was a bigger room than last year's mini con, but uh, you know there was there was quite a lot of people in there. And I know they limited the uh, the attendance to these events because you know it's a much smaller venue, but still, 
uh, it was still pretty crowded at the beginning. So then I managed to get into the uh, <laughs> the uh, the toy food stall, and uh, I had a look at the stuff on the toys toy food stall, and I saw a figure that uh, I've been sort of again thinking of buying, though I passed on it the the, the first time round. Titans Return Voyager Megatron. Now, when this was originally, because this was on wave one of the Titans Return figures, it was like a, a pre-mold of Blitzwing, which came out in a later wave. I didn't get this originally. Um, I waited for the um, I waited for the uh, Blitzwing to come out, and the Blitzwing is is a really really good figure. But more recently, I've I've been getting a taste for remolds, and I've been looking back at this figure and thinking actually it does work really well as Megatron. Uh, so I decided to get it, and um, there was a couple of them in the room. Starbase 55 had a couple, um, and then um, uh, Toy Fu had this one. So I decided to get this one from Toy Fu. And yeah, it's complete. He's got the fusion cannon. He's got the uh, the, the other little gun that's got the uh, the seat in it for the Titan Master. Yeah, it's really, really good. It, it transforms really well. The alt modes are pretty good. Bit 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 kibbly on the robot mode, but... Uh, a pretty cool figure all the same. I mean, I really, really like this thing, and it's it's really, really good. And, and this one's in, in in pretty good condition. You know, it's it's reasonably tight. It's not super loose or anything. The the, the loosest thing is the pegs on the uh, the fusion cannon into the arm. They're they're not particularly tight, but that could be fixed. But yeah, um, <laughs> more recently, I've been thinking I'd like like to get one of these. There was a couple in the room, so I managed to get one. So I got this from Toy Fu. Titans Return. Voyager Megatron. Then I went back to you know the that stall that I was at before you know the um, primetime toys and uh, Starbase fifty four five table, and I decided to make a play on that figure I'd seen earlier because that other person obviously didn't buy it and it was still there, and uh, so I wandered around the room a few times and then came back to them and then I went over to the primetime toy store and says yeah yeah so I want to buy that thing and he says oh so it's not ours it's for the, the, the stall next door this is why. Because they're on the same table, you see. So, <laughs> and they were Pelly and Matey between themselves. Because they obviously knew, they knew each other. And but uh, that big figure that was on the back was for Starbase Fifty Five. So I made a mistake and asking the the prime time toys guys <laughs> that uh, you know I wanted to buy it. So they ushered me next door. And uh, yeah, so I asked the guy I wanted to buy it, and he got it down, and I paid for it. And I can't believe I bought this thing. I really can't believe I bought this thing, but the price was 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 so tempting. I just had to get it. <sighs> Legacy Generation Selects Titan Class Black Zarak. <laughs> now, the thing is, Uh, come here. <sighs> Obviously, I've got the original. <laughs> I've got you know um, the the uh, the the Titan class Scorponok. Uh, I bought this back in the day because I didn't have a like a representation of G one Scorponok, and I bought this thing. And, and this this thing's absolutely incredible. It's amazing. I absolutely love it. And it was it was it was a top bot for me when I bought it. It was it was you know it was on my top bots of the year list. So uh, yep. Yeah, so I got hold of him. And uh, but then they announced this thing, the uh, the repaint into Black Zarak, and <laughs> I looked at it and thought that looks so good, but I couldn't justify buying it because I already had the original Scorponok. But in recent times, I've been thinking I'd like to get it, but I don't want to pay Titan class money for it. I don't want to pay over a hundred quid for it, and. Starbase Fifty Five had this thing sealed on their rack on their shelving at the back for eighty quid. <laughs> there was three of them in the room because uh, T Four E in the corner had two of them, one for ninety five quid and, and the other was one hundred and nineteen. So there there was three of them in the room, but this one was eighty quid, and I thought I can do that. So I bought it and. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a really impressive figure. I mean, I already know how good the mold is because I've I've messed with um, Scorponok and this thing. It's got to love a black repaint. 
<laughs> comes with all the extras. It comes with the uh, you know the, the the reworked head sculpt and headmaster. It's got the it's got the staff and all that stuff. So it's 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 a really really cool figure. You've gotta love it. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's got all the 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 chunky ratchets. It's it's just just such a such an awesome awesome thing. Biggest thing I bought, second most expensive item I bought at the convention. But uh, yeah, I'm really pleased I got it. The only thing was. I then had to, you know, because it was like the third item I bought, it was like early doors, and I had to stuff it into one of my bags, and I had to carry it around for the rest of the event, uh, which was kind of awkward, but uh, yeah, and it's making my arms hurt just holding this thing up because it's so heavy, so yeah, I got that, but I mean, the thing is, I mean, <sighs> I never was a thing for repaints, and more recently, I mean, the last couple of years, I've got a taste for repaints, but is this a repaint too far? I wonder. <laughs> it just made, I, I just look at it and I just laugh. And I, the fact that I've actually got two Titan classes with using the same mould, I can't believe I did that. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I got him. I got Titan Black Zarak. And uh, yeah, so I managed to pick him up for a decent price. So I'm quite happy with that. Oh, okay, right. So next. Um, right, so speaking of T4E, uh, the, the guy in the corner who had the other two black Zarax on his stool, he also had a lot of other stuff on his table, and he had like a box in the front which had loads of like Legends class things that he was he was doing. He said, he says um, he, they were individually priced, but he was like doing buy one, get one half price or whatever it was, or buy one, get one free, I can't remember, some sort of special offer on them. And I was looking through this box, and a lot of the figures that were in there are ones I'd already got. But uh, there was one figure, again a black repaint of a mould I've already got, um, that uh, he had in this box. It was 19 quid, so it wasn't cheap, but he did try to persuade me to take advantage of his offer and buy one of the other things, but I wasn't interested in anything else. So I bought this guy. Yep, Legacy... Sound Blaster Core Class, yeah. So uh, got hold of him. Uh, I've got the Sound Wave and uh, yeah, Sound Blaster Black Repaint again. It's it's, it's another repaint of a mold I've already got. And uh, yeah, so really really happy to get that. Such a simple figure transforms into the cassette mode. Comes with, you know. I think this was the deciding factor. The fact that it comes with a little mini, you know, like a, a little mini rep cassette representation of Buzzsaw, and I, I really love that. But, uh, yeah, great little figure. Some of the joints are a little on the loose side, but apart from that, it looks amazing. It looks like Sound Blaster. Gotta love it. And uh, so I bought that from T4E, and, uh, yeah, that was a, another little, little, little purchase that I made. Then uh, went back around to uh, Toy Fu, was looking around on their table and then they had like some boxes full of loose figures in plastic bags down the side. So I was having a rummage through there and I found a figure. I was looking at it and thinking, well, again, it's a repaint of a mold I've already got, but it looks kind of cool as that character in that mold. Power of the Primes Deluxe Class Retgar. Now, in Combiner Wars, they did that Legends class Retgar, but uh, in Power of the Primes, you know, two waves later, um, they got a, a did a deluxe of him, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it works really well. It's it's the it was the Groove mold, um, you know, sort of repainted from the uh, the Groove mold, which was that that mold they did for the Protector bots as Retgar, and it looks really good. He has got sort of loosey joints on his legs you know he has kind of got loosey loosey goosey joints on his legs but then again it's a used figure but he is complete he's got his hand foot thing and he's got his his, his you know sort of melee weapon pretty cool um it's power of the primes it's not combiner wars but it, it does use the combiner wars mold so it will combine with a combiner wars figure it's got the engineering for it so uh, another potential Combiner Wars-esque figure that I can, you know, throw on a Combiner. 
I've got enough bits to make, I think it's four combiner, combiner Wars combiners, or is it five? I can't remember. I know I can make at least four. But, uh, anyway, so I managed to get hold of him. He was only ten quid, so that was that was half decent. And it's from Toyfu, so it all goes to charity, so that was good. Then, again, oh, then it was like more sort of milling around the room, having a look at things, catching up with um, Bisto Yeti and uh, Jermaine, who I had a quick chat to. And uh, yeah, rolling around, rolling around, rolling around, and then came back to Toy Fu a bit later, and uh, saw another figure on their stall that uh, I've uh, kind of wanted. Again, it's a repaint of a mold I've already got, two versions of. Um, yeah, and uh, it, TF Nation last year, I almost bought this figure as my last sort of figure of the event last year, but I didn't quite have enough money to afford it. So, yeah. Cybertron Basics Swindle. Yeah, so it's the um, hardtop mould, but painted up as Swindle. And I love this mould. This mould is a great mould. I really love it. And uh, it just works so well as Swindle. Um, I've got two versions of the hardtop. I've got the uh, the movie Sector 7 repaint of hardtop, which is some people call Shattered Glass Beachcomber. I've got that version. Um, and also... I've uh, got the original Cybertron Colours um, uh, hardtop, which I bought at TF Nation last year, but I didn't manage to get this one. But uh, yeah, so I've finally got this version of the mould. Like I said, it's a great mould. I, I love this mould, and to get a swindle is, is, is good. It looks really good in these colours. Um, I wish they'd have repainted this as Beachcomber, because this, this mould turns into a, a buggy, which would really suit Beachcomber really well, but they never actually did a Beachcomber repaint of this, and I'm, I'm, I'm a bit bit disappointed in that. I would have liked them to have done... I could do a custom on it, I suppose, get another version of the mould and do a custom, but that's it. I've got three versions of this mould now, so it's, it's a really cool mould. I really like it. So Cybertron Basic Swindle, he's a pretty neat figure that I got from uh, uh, Toy Fu. So, next, moving along, right, then, uh, again, time rolled on a bit more, eventually went round to this this um, other guy, and uh, what was his stall's name? It was called uh, uh, Big Bears something or other, um, but... Uh, yeah, so I had a look on. I was having a look on his stall. I had a chat with him because I, I noticed in one of his bag of bag of bits he had at the bottom of his table that he had um, the the weapons for Cybertron uh, Evac. So I got it out and I asked him about it, and then he says he says, "Oh, I've got a figure at home that's, that 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 belongs to." So <laughs> so I gave it back to him. I says, "Well, if it belongs to your figure at home, you know, you might as well take it back and uh, put it on your figure at home." So I missed out on that. But then looking around on his stall, I saw something else on his table. And I thought, actually, I'd like to get that, even though I, I have got, again, it's a repaint of a mould I've already got. Um, but uh, this one is, was a, a, a retail exclusive that uh, is very hard to find. And, uh, yeah. So, Earthrise Deluxe. Now, this came in that uh, Amazon exclusive two-pack called the War for Cybertron, was it uh, Odyssey? Galactic Odyssey Collection Paradron uh, two pack where it came with that uh, that repainted RC in the in the in the like the the green colours as uh, Paradron Medic, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Earthrise Ratchet. Now I've got the DK two guard, so I've got a version of this mold. Um, but uh, yeah, he had this for forty quid, and it does come with. Uh, some some repro labels or some some toy hacks repro labels not quite a complete set the some of the de decals have been used but the, the the leftovers you could quite easily slap on this guy and make him look better so uh, it, it was 40 quid and plus the fact this is such a it's it's a it's a rare exclusive figure and i thought well that's near enough i you know so i decided to buy it so i've got earthrise uh, wheel um <laughs> earthrise ratchet um yeah again decent mold Transforms obviously it's got the the parts forming with the roof section, but you can plug it onto his back Really good figure. I like ratchet as a character. I already got a soft spot for ratchet So that's another ratchet to, to add to the collection 
So I uh, managed to get him. And uh, then uh, just again, went round the hall again and they came back to the same stall. Um, uh, Big Bear's toy box or whatever he's called. Um, so again, looking in the, the crates at the bottom of his table. I got this. Uh, Combiner Wars Legends Thundercracker. Now, I was looking at this, and I was umming and ahhing about it, and I thought, I've already got that mould. Surely I have, because I like to collect Thundercracker moulds, and it's a small Thundercracker, so, you know, I was kind of looking to get it. But I was looking at it thinking, I've already got that mould. And it wasn't until I got home and looked in my detail. Uh, just give me a moment. Come here. But uh, I saw something, I thought, well, yeah, yeah, that's it. So you look at them and they, they do look very similar. But this, this is the Iron Factory Thundercracker. Iron Factory Legends Thundercracker, not the Combiner Wars one. They do look very similar in robot mode. But when you trans, you know, they've got a different transformation. This one's got a lot more articulation going on. Um... And the, the jet modes do look significantly different. So that's why I thought I already had this one. So like I said, I bought it with a, a gamble that I already had it. But it turns out I didn't. So that was good. So it's, it's another... It's another... Um, shut that. It's, a, it's another um, thundercracker for the, uh, for the team. <laughs> that uh, I wasn't sure whether I had it or not. But uh, it turns out I didn't. So that was good. That was uh, good to get. So I managed to get hold of him. So that's uh, Combiner Wars Legends Thundercracker. And then we got the, the final thing that I bought at the convention. Um, again, from Toy Fu. My final purchase from Toy Fu. And I, I'd seen this thing earlier in the day. Because on the end of their table, they had uh, like a little little box full of like, like mini con figures. And some of them were marked up as, um, what was it called? Energon Jellies. And I thought, what the hell is that going on? But uh, there was one figure in this box, so like a little red figure that turned into a monster truck, and I, was, I messed around with it earlier in the day. And then when I came back, I decided, you know, you know I'm going to get that. So I asked the guy about it, and uh, here's the figure. So I bought it, and uh, he said it was a, a, a unique one-off promotion by a, a sweet company in the UK called uh, Energon uh, Fizzy Jellies. And they uh, they came with a blind pack, which was, which which came bundled with uh, a, a slightly repainted, retooled version of uh, from a Minicon ten pack, and this was one of them. Um, his name's um, what's it called? Body Block, Minicon Body Block, and he's from this uh, Energon Jellies you know blind pack to, you, know, you know collection, and uh, it's slightly different from the the original figure. It's got slightly different paint on it. That the original one hasn't got, so it it is distinct from the original figure that, that came out as part of the uh, the mini cons. But uh, yeah, he turns into like a, like a red monster truck, and that's pretty cool. And he was the last figure that I got at the TF Nation mini con this year, and I only paid a couple of quid for him. But uh, he's a pretty neat little figure. So that was the mini con stuff I got. I mean, I'm quite happy with what I got, considering you know I had to scraped together like four, 300 quid to take to the convention but uh, I was I was quite happy with what I got did quite well uh, mostly bought a lot of repaints <laughs> but uh, yeah so uh, that's that so we just got two more things to finish this video off it's already gone out for 50 minutes so uh, we've got some things and uh, like I said uh, before the week before the uh, the mini con I went on to Hasbro Pulse and pre-ordered a couple of items and uh, they they got delivered quite quickly um so waiting for me when i got home from the uh, tf nation minicon was a package legacy united origins wheeljack yes so decided to get this um like i said the pre-orders went up on hasbro pulse so i i made a play on a couple of characters that i thought were gonna gonna go um now he's he's Bot mode is very much a deluxe, and he is such a, a panel form. He's got so much kibble hanging off his legs and his backpack, and he turns into that 
that van, that Cybertronian van, which you know has got a, a, a space in the back that uh, you know um, uh, Bumblebee Origins Bumblebee can fit into. He's also got the the, the pegs on the side where you can plug those Energon rods on. But uh, this this figure, this toy, um, it, it it's a panel former extraordinaire. It, it turns into the, all these panels fold out to form the sides and the top and the back of the van. It's it's quite something. Um, it's got a lot of drunk in the trunk because of that, because of the way it transforms. Like you've got the, the, the top of the van is is, is right there <laughs> on his backpack. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's not great. I mean out out of the I mean I've got all three of these origin figures, not that I care much about you know the Transformers G1 cartoon series. I couldn't give a monkeys about it. I just think they're interesting looking figures and as I have the other two origin uh, characters you know bumblebee and uh, jazz i decided i wanted to get wheeljack as well so i've got him he's okay um there's a lot going on with this thing um i mean it's a deluxe scale figure but you know it, it's got a got a voyager price point and it's but you know you can see where all the the parts count and the uh, engineering went on this thing to make it work you know <laughs> So yeah, it, it's it's not great, but uh, I managed to get hold of that. And then a few days later, my other Hasbro Pulse pre-order came in, and uh, this is a character that I was really really looking forward to getting. Legacy United Silverbolt from the uh, Beast Wars universe. Oh yes, the bird dog. Now I would go so far as to say that that Beast Wars Silverbolt is probably my all-time favourite. You know, Transforms character from any fiction. And I've got the original. I've got the original right here. And you can see he's in his, his bird dog mode. And this figure is number one in my collection. As in, as in you know, the um, serial number series. This is number one. I have owned this figure for the longest time. I believe I bought it in September 2007 from an NEC Toy Fair. And he's been sat on my windowsill ever since. And uh, he has faded, got yellowed quite a bit on the back. But it's, it's actually given him a, like, a, like a golden sheen. And I don't know whether this guy's got dry brushing on it or as well. It, it looks kind of weird, but I, I do love this thing a lot. And uh, it's one of my all-time favourite Transformer moulds or toys. It's not perfect. It's got a few issues. It looks really good in the dog, you know, the bird dog mode. I, I love the bird bird. And it's also got that, that gimmick whereby you... Let's take these out because they're going to fly everywhere. It's got the, uh, you know, the flapping wing gimmick, which has got the, uh, which fires the missiles because these pegs hit there. But uh, yeah, and he's got his, I've got his, uh, his feather swords. Got those. So yeah, he's really, really cool figure. But they said they was doing one for the legacy line, so I went and got it. Now this one in robot mode looks looks beautiful in robot mode. I love the robot mode. It looks amazing. It, it fixes some of the issues from the original because the original when it was in robot mode it had a number of problems, issues. It had a really tiny, tiny head that wasn't very detailed or well painted. Um, the, the, the engineer on the hips wasn't great and uh, it wasn't the most articulated thing. It was mostly you know, ball joints. But this thing obviously, you know, he's, he's, got, he's got a... He's got a waist joint, you know, he's got he's got properly articulated wings. Um it hasn't got that stupid wing gimmick. He's got a really good head sculpt, you know, he's got you know the feather blades. It's really cool. Now, in robot mode it looks amazing. I love the look of the thing on robot mode, but uh, then you get you transform it into the bird dog mode, and it doesn't look quite so good in the bird dog mode. It looks kind of like skinny and bulky at the same time you know this this one the proportions on this thing are really really great i love the proportions on this thing but the the, the bird dog on the the new version the proportions are, a, are quite a bit out so it doesn't quite work as well in the bird dog mode but it does work in this mode so if you're going to display them you're going to display alt mode like this and robot mode like this so i, I can do that now so yeah that was the uh, the last bot i got this month uh, again, pre-order from Hasbro Pulse. 
There was a couple of other figures that went up on that Hasbro Pulse uh, pre-order. Obviously, um, uh, Legacy Gears and Legacy Sandstorm I really want to get. I also want to get that... Um, something to look out, out for next month is the um, that um, Studio Series um, Concept Art Megatron. I want to get that as well. But anyway, that's my haul for this month. Um, yeah, so first and worst, uh, that thing I like to do at the end of every every uh, bot haul that I do, well, every yeah bot haul that I do every month, um, is picking uh, my least and worst favourite figures that I got in any given month. Now, I've got a couple of candidates for both, um, but... Right, <laughs> so I had a bit of head scratching. Um, it was it was tricky to pick two figures for this 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 thing, but um, I think I've got it. Right, here we go. First and worst. So first, Transarts Motor Spider. It's a masterpiece. Transmetal Tarantulas. It just so is. It, it It's so good. It's a really good rework of the original toy. It just looks awesome. And then the worst, this thing. Um, it looks amazing in alt mode. It looks awesome in alt mode. And this is the reason why I bought it. But then you try to transform it into its robot mode. And it all literally, literally falls apart. Um, it's so bad in its alt mode. A uh, robot mode, sorry. It's so bad in its robot mode. The engineering, the parts form, and everything that goes into making this thing a robot just just doesn't work. It's just it's it's so rickety, scary, and terrible. It's just awful, 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 awful thing. And uh, yeah, that was uh, the worst thing that I got. So there we go. <laughs> I said this would run out to over an hour, didn't I? I think I've mentioned everything I wanted to mention in this video. I've probably missed a few things, but you know that usually happens. But uh, Anyway, so that's the end of this month. Um, obviously, it's Easter Sunday. It's Easter weekend this year because Easter's really early. Um, tomorrow is the uh, is, is April Fool's Day, but it's also you know Easter Monday. You know, it's <laughs> so many things going on next month. So, um, NEC Toy Fair in a couple of weeks' time that I want to go to. Also, as I said, there's a couple of figures that have come out on uh, you know Hasbro Pulse for pre-orders, though they're probably already gone. But uh, I might be able to pick them up from other websites, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to have a look. But uh, anyway, that's been my haul for this month. I've been TFR Wilderness. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. I'll catch you all next time. Ta-da.